We know that Columbus discovered America in 1492. Before that, there were no maps of America, because nobody had ever traveled there. Said just about every parroting automaton ever. It's the, we know, that irks me. Let's debunk it. 1. From the Vatican Library. Interesting stuff is tucked away in the Vatican Library, some of it secret, some public. This gorgeous pre-cataclysm map is called Vatican Ptolemy. The beauty of it is that it was drawn by Nicholas Urmanus before Columbus even set sail. The map was drawn by Nicholas Urmanus for the Pope. Nicholas Urmanus died in 1490. Columbus set sail in 1492. The first maps of America were published, as we know, in the 1500s. As on many other pre-cataclysmic maps, we see Australia as part of an ice-free Antarctic, a mysterious landmass in the Pacific and the North America that stretches to Europe, Greenland and Canada connected. The name of the map, Vatican Ptolemy, is in honor of a man who already depicted America 1400 years prior. 2. Ptolemy's Map of the Universe This is the map of the universe, according to Greek geographer and astronomer Ptolemy, who lived in Alexandria between the years 100 and 170. I'll ignore the museum's suggestions of what I'm supposed to be seeing, and say what I see. Is it allowed to form one's own thoughts? Yes. We see the continents, surrounded by a ring of water, today a ring of ice, then a ring of fire, then other realms. The center appears to be the North Pole, there is no South Pole. To the left, I see Europe and Asia. To the right, I see the North American continent in pink, with South America merging into the ice ring. There is water between California and the rest of the continent and a narrow waterway, instead of the Great Lakes of Erie and Michigan. That matches precisely what America looked like on old maps pre-1600s. Across from California, again, a large continent in the Pacific. Is that the now sunken Lemuria? The yellow on the left appears to be Africa, but the wrong way around, possibly due to cataclysmic changes. 3. Ancient Transoceanic Travel We know there was no transoceanic contact prior to Columbus. For thousands of years, your ancestors never ever crossed the ocean. How gullible would you have to be to believe that? We have been seafarers for thousands of years. The Pacific Islanders were expert seafarers. We find their traces in South America, Hawaii, Fiji, and New Zealand. Isn't that a much larger transoceanic distance than crossing the Atlantic? Thousands of years before Columbus, the Phoenicians traveled from Europe via Africa and India all the way to China. Or so we are told. The trip takes months. But they never ever undertook the trip from Europe to America which can be done in a week. Maps are not the best evidence of pre-Columbian transoceanic contact. There are coins, statues, ruins, excavations, and even travel reports that do a much better job of that. But, I chose to prove it via maps, because it's the more challenging undertaking. 4. The Map and Doge's Palace My two best pieces of proof for pre-Columbian maps in America are Vatican Ptolemy and the Map and Doge's Palace, Venice. The reason we find both in Italy, in my view, is because the Venetians have been secretly traveling to America before Columbus. This map has been dated to 1428, but some say earlier. It's drawn based on information brought back by Marco Polo and Niccolo da Conti from their travels to China. It can be found in the wonderful maps room at the palace. While myself visiting the Doge's palace, I didn't recognize it as an early representation of America, because it's upside down from our way of seeing. Let's turn it around. Interesting. The tour guide failed to mention this fact. The tour guide was talking about the map tracing the route of Marco Polo, or brought back by Marco Polo or something, and failed to mention that the map debunked 600 years of lies around Columbus discovered America. I should have noticed the red lettering of California. But Venice being noisy and crowded, I wasn't in my sharpest state. We see the Pacific, China, India, and to the right, we see North America. We see all the city names of the Native Americans. Further north, it says, Terra Incognita di Antropophagi, which means unknown land of cannibals. Just like the many maps claimed to be from the 1500s, but are probably from earlier centuries. Norse mythology says that when you travel eastward beyond Greenland and Iceland, you finally reach a land of cannibalistic giants. I quote from a book titled 1434 by Gavin Menzies. 
Small wonder, given their centuries of trade with China, that Venetians were the first Europeans to obtain world maps from their trading partner. Diverga's map of the Eastern Hemisphere was published in 1419, and Pizzagano's map of the Caribbean appeared in 1424. Today, you can see on the wall of the Doge's Palace, a world map, published prior to 1428, that includes North America. As the roundels on the walls testify, this map was created from evidence brought back from China by Marco Polo and Niccolo da Conti. The inscription relating to da Conti says. Oriental India, namely China and the Indies in 15th century terminology, as drawn in this way, is clearly a result of the foreign travels and illustrated writings, not least the narratives of the merchant of the 15th century, Niccolo da Conti. Publication of this itinerary sheds new light on the travels of mariners. This map was probably completed before 1428, inauguration of Doge's Palace, but destroyed by fire in 1486, the original maps, of which a copy was given to Dom Pedro, were hung on the walls. According to Lorenzetti, the map was repainted by Ramusio in 1540 after the fire, the same Ramusio who had said that Fra Moro's world map was copied from one in the Camaladentian Monastery, on what is now called the Island of the Dead, in the lagoon. Giovanni Forlani's map shows Oregon and the Bering Straits before Bering or Vancouver. Zeta's map shows Vancouver Island also before Cook or Vancouver, and places on a Colonia de Genesi, or Chinese colony. So, before 1421 was published, I sought a map that would have been published before Magellan set sail, but still have depicted the strait. There were several candidates. In the Venetian Doge's palace, there is an early 15th century map showing Asia and the Pacific. This map has two roundels, which state how it was compassed from information brought home to Venice by Marco Polo and Niccolo da Conti. Marco Polo returned in 1295, and Niccolo da Conti by 1434, possibly as early as 1424. Despite showing the Pacific in America, the Doge's map does not show the southern part of the Americas. There is another map in the map room that does show South America and a route from Atlantic to Pacific, but unfortunately it is undated. Gavin Menzies is an author who has argued, across several books, that the Chinese discovered America in 1421. That's almost as myopic as thinking Columbus discovered America. Others claim the Vikings discovered America, the Phoenicians discovered America, etc. Why so narrow-minded? There were humans there, all along. And they've traveled back and forth, all along. For some reason, this knowledge has been eradicated and replaced by a false history that claims our ancestors were dumb and primitive. From another book by Gavin Menzies, titled 1421. During my researches in Venice, I was told of a description by the Portuguese historian Antonio Galvao, who died in 1557, of a world map the Portuguese dauphin, Dom Pedro, Henry the Navigator's brother, had brought back with him from Venice in 1428. In the year 1428, it is written that Dom Peter, the King of Portugal's eldest son, was a great traveler. He went into England, France, Almain, or Germany, and from thence, into the Holy Land and to other places, and came home by Italy, taking Rome and Venice in his way. From whence he brought a map of the world, which had all the parts of the world and earth described. The Strait of Magellan was called in it the Dragon's Tale. The Cape of Boas Branca, the Forefront of Africa, and so forth of other places. By which map, Dom Henry, the king's third son, was much helped and furthered in his discoveries. Here was an unequivocal assertion that by 1428, both the Cape of Good Hope, Boa Esperanca, and the Strait of Magellan, separating Argentina from Tierra del Fuego, had been charted on a map. It was an extraordinary claim. How could the Strait of Magellan have appeared on a map, let's call it the 1428 world map, for the sake of simplicity, almost a century before Ferdinand Magellan is said to have discovered it? To emphasize that this was no mistake, Galvao continued. It was told to me by Francis de Souza Tavares that in the year 1528, Dom Fernando, the king's son and heir, did show him a map which was found in the study of Alcabaza, a renowned Cistercian monastery, traditionally used as a library by Portuguese kings, which had been made 120 years before. This map set forth all the navigation of the East Indies, with the Cape of Boa Esperanca, according as our later maps have described it whereby it appeared that in ancient times, there was as much or more discovered than now there is. In ancient times, there was more discovered than there now is. I couldn't agree more. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.